Next up, we have Taylor from Open Table. Thank you. All right, um, well, let's kick it off here with just a couple questions to the audience. Uh, how many people out there are Open Table users? There was a hand. All right, that's what I like to see. Now, how many of you use Open Table a lot? Okay, all right, so everyone raising your hand there. I want you to find me afterwards and let's see how many open table points you have because I did bring some swag for the winner and you, uh, just to say thank you for being such a great you know, customer. All right, so unexpected surprises is what we've titled this one, or how Open Table discovered uh, delightful results by using Pendo guides. So initially we did uh, try Pendo out mostly for an onboarding use case. Um, right now, Open Table partners with mostly uh, elite restaurants of a certain uh, expected long-term value, and we can do basically anything we want in our bag of tricks to get them onto the platform, and it costs sometimes a lot of money, but we, we get that money back. Uh, those represent only the very tip top of the pyramid, and really the rest of the addressable market is much further down in those casual markets. Um, we're gonna have to do something a little bit less uh, hands-on, a little less white glove treatment with them to get them going. And uh, during that discovery, uh, of creating a user of value, we actually found some value for ourselves. So real quick, key takeaways, who am I? Um, let's talk a little bit about me, places I've worked, things I've done. Um, open table and Pendo, what are, you know, we started with onboarding and moved to more of a marketing thing here. And uh, our experiment, you know, I've talked about a specific thing we did here, we saw great results from, uh, learned a little bit about that metrics wise. And then finally, um, some future integration, where we want to go with, with the platform. So first things first, I am a product manager and an empty seat fill, and not just my own seat. So what I do is work with various companies, um, the David and the Goliath, to borrow a term from our friend Malcolm Gladwell. Uh, initially it was DealFlix. Who here has heard of DealFlix? Okay, yes, okay. Well, <laughs> if only we had him at that time. But basically what that was is the David in the space, which is yield management for movie theaters, the movie theater in the industry. We were there to disrupt fan data. And about 88% of seats are empty across the, any given movie in the United States. So we're selling those seats, uh, depending on their most empty times, at a discount to consumers. Uh, it's a two-sided marketplace. We have our B2B, uh, which is customers at the theaters or if they're in uh, open table space, the restaurants. And then B2C, those are the consumers of the buyers, people who buy tickets, diners, people who sit down. Uh, and now, uh, here I find myself with the Goliath, right? So 20 years at the head of the industry, uh, Open Table, some people have known, has been around since 1998. Our first uh, solution was literally just put a computer in your restaurant and it attaches to the internet. At that time, it was a pretty big deal. Um, since then, we've kind of you know, been at or below the technology lead in the industry, depending on where we were. Most recently, we've been uh, launching, our, launching and scaling our cloud platform, which is called Guest Center. So Guest Center is a uh, software that a restaurant will run in the cloud. You know, they don't need to have anything in their restaurant. They can do it from their iPad. It's a much more flexible solution. It's, the, it's basically the David of a much larger market because uh, we are in uh, part of the Priceline Group, which is also part of the Booking Holdings Group. Booking Holdings is actually a $12 billion entity uh, internationally, and we are just a small part of that. So we are not uh, as slow and stupid as the Goliath might sound, make it sound. We're actually currently doing some of the th same things that I was doing at DealFix, which is experimenting with uh, flexible pricing. Right now we're looking into the delivery market and network-only access. There are plenty of restaurants out there that don't need our product, but that doesn't mean that they shouldn't have access to our network of 125 million monthly active clients. So. Uh, Pendo for open table. Uh, it's better than we even consider. Uh, what we, like I said earlier, what we wanted was to onboard more for less. And uh, our, cust our company uh, needed to address the goals of bringing down our customer acquisition costs because, uh, again, the lower part of the market is, uh, represents a much lower LTV. And letting the product do the education for us is a big part of that. Uh, the total addressable market is much larger there, and we can't afford to onboard restaurants with uh, going in and sitting down for every single one of them and basically getting them up and running on the platform. We need the software to do a lot of that. And as we were doing that, we found a bonus. Um, we were able to help position us as a marketing tool as well. Um, one of the main things we do to help our customers realize value on our system is help putting more butts in seats with our marketing platform. 
So inside uh, Guest Center, you're able to uh, create marketing campaigns, do some of this flexible pricing that we're dipping our toe into. You know, you can, uh, a seat to a restaurant is worth a lot more on Wednesday at 2 p.m. than it is Friday at 7. Right? You just, we don't necessarily even want us at that part of our network because people are coming in the door either way. Um, and, and the newest tool we have for that is custom promotions. So we allow our restaurants to choose a price, choose a time, and launch a promotion and uh, drive more bookings when it matters by using the marketing campaigns. And so let's check out one of the experiments we did here with Manjo. This uh, experiment, we started with a pretty you know, achievable goal, some kind of small softball of just a thousand campaigns in a rolling 28 day period. Uh, we launched this back in the summer and we started off with just email, traditional email marketing. We had some inside sales reps helping people. Uh, as, but as you know, emails, the rate is low, working with inside sales, runs an endeavor. So our wonderful marketing team, one or two of which may be here tonight amongst you, uh, said, hey, you know, Taylor, I heard you've been using Pendo. You know, we're really excited about the idea of letting the product kind of guide people to this feature themselves. And so we said, okay, let's put together a little plan here. We have a system um, much like Katie's, where we actually have a SWAT team, as we, as we call it. That is basically myself on one side, the product side, and my colleague Sarah is the other side, and we kind of are the directors of you know, what can go out when. We have marketing calendars for different um, campaigns that go out that kind of thing. Uh, so people aren't just inundated with guys who are not getting shot and blasted when you log into Guest Center. Um, so we started with targeting customers. Um, we wanted to incentivize use of the system uh, with campaigns that we actually paid for. So those first custom promotions with campaigns we made in August, we uh, gave people credits for, right? We used, um, excuse me, we used Pendo's uh, robust segmentation tools to make sure that we were helping find the right people to move to, people who were interested in the product based on, you know, our kind of key value and then after that, you know, we checked on the results using some of those analytic tools that, you were available, that are available in there and decided that it was time uh, this month to roll out a no credit campaign and to a much wider audience. So we started small, we kind of helped people along. Uh, each of these campaigns kind of started here with just various marketing driven messaging and then we bring you to that section of the product and teach you how to set up your campaign, teach you a little bit about what you're doing, where you can see it in the consumer side and how you can measure your so what do we see? What do we learn? Who cares? Um, uh, Pendo increases their engagement for our marketing campaigns. It's just that simple. Um, this slide has not been updated. There was a very simple math equation here that says uh, more self-service campaigns equals less marketing dollars. So it's a pretty complex uh, math, math equation there. Um, back in August, we had email and ISR. We were paying our ISRs a direct percentage of the revenue at the restaurant. And um, about 12% open rate from email. We only got 19 self-service campaigns that month from about 817 customers active who enabled the product on their system. Now, fast forward through the experiment that I just went uh, through, and in October, using Pendo and the same ISRs, we had about the same open rate, a nominal increase in active customers, but a 25x increase in self-service campaigns. So 484 campaigns were created in October. And that's going from about 2% to about 44% of our campaigns in October are now self-service. And I know what you're thinking, you're saying, Taylor, adding those stats, people are, people are using this anyways, they already knew about it, they knew about it in August, they're just finally adopting it. Well, I say no. We use those robust segmentation uh, abilities inside Pendo and made sure that we targeted people who only had not done it yet. So we were not double dipping into people and making sure that everyone that we targeted with these campaigns was actually going to be a new conversion into our system. So there you go. Um, and so that, that's about it. That's the experiment. Um, that's, how, that's just an example of how Pendo's really helped us realize actual marketing success, helping our customers realize the value of our own marketing platform. It was kind of a fun experience to market a marketing platform to a customer so that they can market to their customers on our platform. <laughs> so I got, I got through that one. And uh, just really quick, where we want to go next with it, we love Pendo. It really helps us to, uh, communicate directly with our customer. Right now there's plans on the marketing side to expand additional campaign types. It's not just one. We have a bunch of different things you can do on our marketing platform. 
uh, to connect with those 125 million diners. Uh, connect to reporting data. So another big thing that we've been championing in Guest Center is the reporting data. Like how do, how do the dollars you spend with Open Table translate to real revenue for your business? Um, and also how can we help you run the campaigns when it makes the most sense, right? That same kind of problem of seven o'clock on a Friday, probably not the best time to be running a two dollar and seventy five percent cover campaign when you're only paying a dollar for it. So uh, onboarding, um, we've had success with that so far. I chose to kind of Get, get aside from that, but uh, it is great. You know, we have had some real good success with onboarding. Um, new customers, uh, the next kind of thing we're getting to is really just a low or absolutely no touch system where a customer can come onto our community site, uh, say, oh yes, this is my restaurant. I would like to uh, sign up for Open Table and we can get them in there. And they can do all the work. They can realize value from the product before they even spend a single dollar with us. And when they're ready to check out, they just, it's give us a credit card and they're up and running. All their reservations are on our network. Uh, and finally, exploring a couple other things. The Guide Center is something we're really excited about. Uh, it's something we haven't even scratched the surface with, but we have a lot of support cases. Um, people call into Open Table a lot from the restaurant side. Uh, we have 50,000 restaurants and only a couple hundred reps. And so anything that we can do to bring down that call volume and that cost per call uh, by putting the information at our users' fingertips inside the product is gonna be huge for us. And I'm really excited to get into that. Um, really, it's all about take, keeping context inside the app as your users are going into it, right? So instead of picking up the phone, instead of going to a support site, watching a YouTube video, all these things are bringing outside of where you should be, which is in the product, and getting the guides you need from in there. And we like it so much that we're actually piloting uh, some guides on the consumer side of our product as well to that large number of people, which is going to be an uh, order of magnitude larger, as James knows, and uh, that's really exciting for us too. Uh, we couldn't be happier with some of the results we found, and just want to come here today and kind of express that to you. So, any questions, now's the time. Woo.